Hey guys, uh, now that we have the valve train all dialed in in terms of valve flashes and cam timing, uh, we're going to do something kind of cool today. <laughs> or at least I think it's going to be cool. Uh, we're going to create our own clear valve cover out of glass panels we're cutting out of a sheet so that we can take a look inside and see the valve train in action while the car is running. Other than pure curiosity, the biggest reason why we're doing this is to visually verify that the camshaft is getting oiled properly on all lobes. Of course, this is very, very critical to ensure the longevity of the engine. And speaking of which, my camshaft is actually getting oiled in two different ways. The camshaft itself is an internally oiled unit. So at the tip of each camshaft lobe, there is a hole that pushes out oil constantly that keeps the lobe lubed when it's getting pushed against a rocker arm. Second, there's also a spray bar that is installed parallel to the camshaft that literally sprays streams of oil directly at the contact point between the cam lobe and the rocker arm. So we're going to be able to visually verify that both systems are in fact functioning correctly by being able to peer inside the valve cover while the car is running and revving. <laughs> I really can't take all the credit for this idea though. Uh, Dave, one of my favorite and most knowledgeable viewers, um, suggested that I actually create an open top cardboard box that I would place on top of the head so that I can peer inside as the engine runs. However, he also mentioned that the camshaft threw oil everywhere and made a mess when he did it. So I started looking around for a clear valve cover that I can buy, but um, surprise, surprise, they really only make those for small block Chevys. So I'm taking Dave's idea one step further and actually making a glass box so we can all take a look inside without making a mess. Uh, we'll, we'll actually probably still make a mess, but uh, hopefully it won't be as bad. Now, if you're thinking that going through the trouble of making this box is totally insane and unnecessary, uh, yes, you are absolutely right. This is not something everyone needs to do. Uh, if your camshaft lobes look all fine after thousands of miles of driving, they're probably getting oiled fine. Um, and even if you did want to do something like this, uh, Dave's suggestion of just making a quick cardboard box with a addition of a clear plastic film on top of it would probably suffice for a quick visual check. I'm mostly doing it out of curiosity and because I have nothing better to do and I thought it might be insightful for all of us to be able to take a look. Cool, uh, I'm finally done building this thing. Um, let me just talk you guys through just really quickly the, the subtle but undeniable genius of this design. Um, first, the entire thing is wrapped on the outside with um, clear packing tape. That was my attempt at making this thing sort of shatter, shatter proof. The, the worst thing that can happen is this thing just shatters into a million pieces and gets all over the engine, which, um, I, <laughs> which that's just gonna be a disaster if that happens. So um, I wrapped it in plastic tape just so that if it does break, it'll just crack and not shatter all over the place. And speaking of shattering, um, on the bottom edge here, there's felt tape. Uh, the felt tape, I place it there so that it acts as some sort of a shock absorber between the glass and the shaky engine. Uh, and I think the, I think it'll also help a little bit on sealing off the oil uh, so that we prevent as much leaks as possible. Um, and on that front, you also see these cardboard fins that I have protruding um, like this to the inside. What I'm hoping that happens is all the oil runoff from the top and the edges um, will follow the fins and the, the cardboard fins will direct the oil more into the middle of the cylinder head rather than just dripping down the side and leaking everywhere. And of course, it's probably still gonna make a mess, but um, this will prevent the leak somewhat. And all the edges or the joining edges have been taped three times over to make sure that I don't cut my hands and this thing holds uh, fairly strong. And lastly, in all of the inside corners, I placed in the, the black oil-proof gasket uh, or the silicone gasket material 
all on the edges so that it um, seals in the oil a little bit better. Now, we're not gonna be able to run the engine all the way to operating temperature in this thing. Hopefully, uh, what we're gonna be able to do is just place this on, turn on the engine, run it for maximum two minutes. That'll be long enough for us to just um, visually inspect everything, make sure that the oil spray bar is working correctly, all the camshaft lobes are getting enough oil, um, and it'll be just be cool to look at for maybe a couple of minutes, and then we'll shut the engine off well before the oil actually gets pretty hot. Now, like I mentioned, one of the key things that we'll be on the lookout for is how this oil spray bar functions. Uh, we need to make sure that it's not clogged in the system, and also that the jets are, are pointed in a way that it provides um, adequate lubrication to all of the cam lobes. And I'm a little bit concerned about that because this oil spray bar is a little bit bent. I'm not entirely sure if it was bent by design or if I have a damaged unit. So that's one of the things that we'll uh, look to verify. Let's see how this thing fits. it actually fits reasonably well. Now we definitely have to make sure that the box isn't touching the sprocket or the chain because that would be a disaster. Alright, let's reconnect the spark plugs. This is kind of cool because the spark plug wires are just long enough that it's acting as kind of a clamp on the valve cover. So hopefully it'll stay put, but this is going to be a giant mess, I can already tell. Uh, I'm actually kind of really scared <laughs> that something's going to go horribly wrong. I do not recommend that you try this at home. Unless, of course, everything goes perfectly, then you can try it at home. Alrighty, I think we've done all the prep work that we can do. So let's... Get a rag ready because oil is going to be spilling out the sides, hopefully not too much. Let's just try it. Alright, the engine obviously has a massive vacuum leak, so it's running pretty poorly, but it is running. I'm going to pick up the camera so you guys can take a closer look. So you can see the oil uh, oozing out of the holes on each of the individual lobes. And you can also see the oil flow out of the side of the spray bar. The problem is uh, that oil stream from the spray bar isn't supposed to drip down onto the middle of the rocker arm like this. It's supposed to spray directly beneath the camshaft so that it gets right in between the contact point between the camshaft and the rocker arm. Where it is dropping oil right now, it is totally useless. It's not lubricating anything. Now, I've heard that oil spray bar does a better job of lubricating the camshaft, especially at higher RPMs. So that's why I'm revving the engine to see if anything changes as the rev goes up. I was hoping to see that the oil spray bar actually does what it's supposed to do at higher RPMs, but that doesn't really seem to be the case either. There's almost no change in the flow of the oil from the oil spray bar at different points in the RPM. As we increase the RPM, you can really start to see how much oil the camshaft really is pushing out, and it's starting to create these streaks on the top of the valve cover. Well, I guess that's the end of this test. The, the car is just dying out from this vacuum leak, so it's about to shut off anyway. Now, what did we learn from all of this? I initially did this test because I thought the oil spray bar might be too bent out of shape or there might be a clog in it, but neither of those things ended up being true, and that's the good part. The bad part is that the oil spray bar doesn't actually function at all. The oil streams from the, the spray bar doesn't actually reach the lobes at all, it just drips down onto the, the rocker arms. 
it certainly seems like running an internally oiled cam and a spray bar at the same time on an otherwise stock engine is just a bad idea. Actually, uh, let me rephrase that. It's not that it's a bad idea. It's really more that running or trying to run both systems off of the stock oil pump it is not the best method of lubrication that a lot of people seem to think it is. And if we think a little bit more about this, this makes perfect sense. The Datsun engine was never designed to run both systems, so it'd be kind of weird if both of those functioned perfectly fine. And if you try to buy an aftermarket cam, especially a performance cam, those manufacturers specifically recommend that you place block off plates on the um, cam towers and you can and it suggests you actually not install the, um, the oil spray bar those manufacturers probably know what i just found out the Datsun oil pump cannot handle both systems now all of this being said should everyone who has a internally oiled cam remove their spray bars uh, well, no, I don't think I, I don't think that either. I, I think the even though that the spray bar isn't working, I, I think there is enough oil flow coming out of the camshaft um, itself that the camshaft seems to be functioning just fine. And that's probably why people think that this is a totally fine method of lubricating the engine because they never did this clear valve cover check. They never actually looked at the functioning of the oil spray bar while the engine was running and every once in a while they'll just open up the valve cover and look at the camshaft and it'll be just fine because again these dots and camshafts are super stout so that's probably where this misconception comes from but from my experience looking at my engine and visually expect inspecting how this thing runs there's really zero reason to run the oil spray bar if i don't plan on upgrading the stock oil pump to a high performance unit so what I'm going to do is just actually just leave it alone for now. I am going to order block off plates uh, for the cam towers so I can just remove this um, pointless oil spray bar. Um, but until that comes, look, the engine's been running fine before. It runs fine now. So I'm just going to slap the valve cover back on uh, the real one this time and get the car running again. You know, the, basically the conclusion is is that the oil spray bar, it doesn't really matter if you install it or not. It's not going to do anything, but it also doesn't impact anything. The spray bar is taking a little bit of oil away from the camshaft itself, but the camshaft still is getting enough oil that it, it's really not a problem. So keep it installed if you want. Install block off plates if you want. Either way, I don't think it's really going to make a difference. Now, if you plan on driving the Datsun really roughly, or if you plan on taking it out to race, then that's a different story. Then you should listen to the camshaft manufacturer and purchase block off plates so you can get rid of the spray bar, so you can direct all the oil only to the camshaft. Or you can also just purchase a high volume or high performance oil pump so that the both of the systems are actually functioning as, it, um, as designed. But that's an area that I have no experience in, so I can only guess, but I would imagine that having both a internally oiled cam and a properly functioning oil spray bar is probably the best method of lubrication in extreme conditions. I hope this discussion was helpful and that gives you a better idea when deciding how to lubricate your camshaft and valve train when you're building your L-Series engine. For the next episode, we're going to skip around our checklist a little bit and we'll conduct a compression test now that our valve train is all dialed in and I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, see you guys next time.